Hey, before we get started with the podcast, I just want to apologize that there is actually no video. I couldn't get the video and the audio uh, to piece together properly. I was messing around with it for a while, but I just want to apologize in advance, uh, and I just want to say thank you to Sean for coming on. Uh, he was an amazing guest, um, and next time I will try my best to <laughs> get the video onto YouTube with the audio. So, sorry in advance. Uh, please enjoy, and I will do my best next time. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Not only is this my first podcast, is this is yours as well. Yours as well, yeah. Yeah. That's great. You wanted to start one? So, well, I th- you, certainly thought of one. You for know, start of doing, well, for, for anything, really. I, um, you know, I've just obviously I've seen a lot on YouTube, and mm-hmm. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and... Um, you know, friends of ours have talked about, you know, starting their own. Yep. So it's, I mean, it's 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 in the it's in the know now. Like the people are doing this all the time. So yeah, it's it's, it's, it's definitely popular. It's yeah. Super popular. Um, I'm excited to see where it can go, but I feel like there might be a limit to the podcasting. Like, when does it start to transition to something else? You know what I mean? Like, it was YouTube for a long time, and yeah. then it turns kind of to podcasting, and that's really popular right now. But I feel like it might transition to something else in the next five years. What do you see it? What do you see it as going? What do you think you can go to? My own personal thought, I thought like maybe you'd convert podcast and video together. Not like just talking, but like I thought about maybe taking what we talk about and then transitioning that into a video. Okay. So we talk and then yeah. it transitions to a video of us doing what we talked about or something. Oh, so if it was based okay. on a topic. Yeah. So if I had like maybe a scientist on or something like that, then it would move on to like going into the lab and talking about it and more like visual, I guess, okay. instead of just talking through word and ear. Right. You're actually showing. Yeah, what exactly. So about. I don't know. I feel like that's the way you could transition more for the podcasting. But right now I think we're just going to stick with, <laughs> with, this. with the audio for now. But yeah, well, it's great. And, and, and the audio too is, is good if you're, if you're traveling or if you're in the car, like I, mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time in the car so you can throw a podcast on if you've got an hour. Yep. You know, listen to some great stuff. And my favorite thing, things. my favorite thing is uh, cleaning the house, like just doing like some chores, like oh, I gotta get some clothes done or laundry or yeah. uh, the dishes, and then just throw on a quick twenty-minute episode or even sit down. You can watch it like a movie too if it's a long enough uh, podcast. Yeah, you can. Yeah, just watch away. Yeah. Um. So you're into real estate. I am real estate yeah. agent. I am. Yeah. Do you? Uh, what made you want to get into that? Uh. I had I had bought and sold probably six or seven of my own homes. Really? Yeah, and um, so in that in that transition, I guess uh, I just always kind of thought, gee, I yeah, I could do that, or I think I'd enjoy to do that. Um, at the time, I'm, I was a social worker, so um, uh, my wife and I talked about it, and we decided to make the jump and went and wrote my real estate exam, and here I am, seven almost eight years later. Nice. And I did it part time for about four and a half years or so, and then um, finally just decided to make the jump and that's leave, cool. Leave my yeah, position and go into real estate, so it was fun. It's that scary jump, but you did it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You, you've been loving it ever since. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, great. it looks. I feel like a lot of people see a glamorous side of the real estate side, but yeah. there's a lot of work into it that people don't realize. Uh, absolutely. And yeah. with you, you work. You did social work, like a social worker? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that would have helped, like part of your journey, that would have helped transitioning into the real estate because that's a pretty emotional experience for a lot of peop- home buyers and like getting into that aspect and like people are nervous and what to do when it comes to buying a home and yeah. getting a home. But I feel like with you doing the social work, that would have transitioned into dealing with clients. Maybe well, I'm wrong. I don't no, know. I, I have I no think, idea. I think it helped me enormously, honestly. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had to deal with many, many different types of clients over the years, you know, with my social work degree. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so, and, and you're right. It's it's the biggest purchase most people will ever make in their lives. Um, it's stressful. It's probably, yep. it's, it's right up there with divorce. You know? Yeah, no, so, seriously. Seriously. You know? And uh, so it's it's hard. And so if you can, if you have the the ability to calm people down and give them the information they need and, and guide them in the right right way and not force them into anything. Like, yep. You know, just find out what they want and what they need. And, exactly. And 
don't push them. too much on them because they're already being pushed enough by other things. And right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When I was doing a little bit of research into it, I like I didn't think about how much emotional attachment there was to making that decision and because most people buy a home for like a one and done deal not too many people want to like jump around home to home and move all over the place because that's just a more of a headache like right getting from house to house you just want to find a good one and stick with it that's most people but i yeah. could be wrong yeah, you'll see you'll see that some some i think you'll see people move a little more now um just with uh, people are looking for you know they want to build some equity especially like people will start with a first time home like a first-time home buyer will, will buy a house to get into a house mm -hmm. and start their journey, you know, build a little equity. Yep. And then they start to have children or, you know, circumstances change. They want a bigger house. They want a smaller house. Sell, move, or job takes them to, the, to another spot. True, yeah. You know, so it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a, it's, a cool, uh, it's a cool market to get into. Yeah. I, uh, is there a process to build your home? Would you need a real estate agent? If you're building your own home, you can. Uh, there's certain, there's certain building, um, well, there's certain builders I think that will work with realtors. Okay. You know, so they'll they'll work with realtors. They'll have the realtors set up. You know, say they're going to build these spec homes or build a build a house for them, um, whatever they want. Um, then the realtors can be involved. So a buyer, c I could represent a buyer, bring them to a, a selling agent, and then we can do the deal in between there. And then then basically, you, you, once you get the deal organized they deal with the 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 builder and they can pick out their flooring and their oh, okay yeah, all yeah. those kind of things yeah um, is uh is being a real estate agent like a service business like is that is it considered your a service like it's almost yeah. like so s other people don't have to take that extra step into figuring out for homes and stuff is that yeah i, I think it is it's definitely a service that way and it's also you know we are regulated you know so we have a body so we are we have a mandate that we have to follow to be ethical and um, and uh, and managed, I guess. So you mm -hmm. know, we have rules that we can't cross. Uh, you know, and we have rules that we can't break. What kind of rules would that be? Well, it's things, you know, um, things to do with multiple offers. Um, you know, just making sure that people are getting the right. Um, what am I thinking of there? I'm trying to give you an, think of an example. <clears throat> like with multiple offers, for example, and now with this market, with the way that it's going a little wild and it's yeah. definitely a seller's market. Hectic. <laughs> you just have to make sure that everybody has a fair shot and they're given the opportunity to, to come in with an offer um, and uh, and play ball. So you're playing ball with, with the buyer, the seller, seller's agent, buyer's agent. You know, so yeah. there's lots of different people that are that are in the mix and you're just trying to give everybody the – the right the right amount of information okay and that's yeah. a rule that you got to kind of go by yeah i oh. mean there's there's so many different aspects of that you know like being ethical in, in some of somebody else's houses we show people houses that they open up their house to us you know they we need to be trusted that we're going in yeah oh my my grandfather actually opened his house to you yeah you showed somebody around yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's funny yeah. yeah true i didn't think about the aspect of having people come in and actually i don't know trust you with their home <laughs> yeah yeah uh you know we so we we offer a, a bit of protection i think as realtors as well so you know um where if you listed with mls as opposed to a private sale you've got somebody that's gonna you know that if if i list the house and i and there's another agent that wants to come and show the house to their their potential buyers mm -hmm. Then we have we put lock boxes on the houses. We we know that these people are bonded. They're they're regulated through, through our our mandates. Yep. You know, through the New Brunswick Real Estate Association and, and the Canadian Real Estate Real Estate Association. Um, so we feel comfortable letting them in, um, and and I think that's the security that people are looking for. And and it's 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 a skill to learn to to bring somebody through a house, and and show them and be respectful of what's what's there yeah you know um you want to make them feel excited and happy and do you have to do a process before you show someone a house do you have to see it yourself and like learn about it we we will look it up normally on mls you know or wherever it what's, is what's what's mls it's a multiple listing service so oh, okay so we have that as part of being a realtor um we gain access to the multiple listing service so with myself for example i'm with the saint john board 
So I pay a monthly fee to be part of the board, mm -hmm. but also do I get access through the multiple uh, multiple listing service, which is, as the lay people would, would recognize, would be realtor.ca. Okay. So the regular yep. website, yep. right? Everybody that goes to look at houses, most people will go to realtor.ca. Yeah, I do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. So, you're, so you're looking on realtor.ca. Well, that's our MLS system. Okay. And so when we come in and we do a listing or we're going to show a house, we'll go into our MLS system and we'll look and, and see, you know, what's listed for, how big are the bedrooms, um, how big is the property. Um, we can do searches on Service New Brunswick outside of that to say, okay, well, I can see the lines. I'll print that off and take it with me mm -hmm. uh, so they know the boundaries of the property. Yep. Um, we have the ability to look into um, the province of New Brunswick's, you know, the deeds. We can check on the deed to see if there's any liens on the property. Um, What's it mean to, like, have a lien on the property? So let's say, for example, um, somebody had a business and they defaulted on a loan or something and didn't pay their bill, mm -hmm. those, those employers can go and put a lien on some of your assets, which could be your home. Okay. Um, yep. so, so if you didn't have... If, yeah, because uh, you got to have something to give up, I guess. <laughs> right. So if they put a lien on your property and you sell it, that lien has to be paid off. So uh, paid off upon sale, uh, upon, the purchase, uh, upon the sale of property. So mm -hmm. um, they'll determine... If you have enough funds to cover it, then great from the purchase of your sale. If not, then it could even be responsibility of the the uh, the buyers the buyers themselves to cover that loan um, if it's not caught. But that's why we have lawyers as well. So yeah. <laughs> also, lawyers are, are are really good at at looking for yeah. the making the sure you're following make, the guidelines. Sure yeah. What you know. You yeah. Know. No, for sure. Yeah. So that's where we're at with that one. Yeah. Well, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, do you deal with many customers that want to interview you as an agent yourself? Like they want to get to know you and because like if they're, they're yeah, like they're trying to realtor. find somebody and like yeah. so find someone trusting and not just trying to get as much as they can out of them. And just, I don't know. You're like a super nice guy. And I just feel like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. One of the nicest people. And I feel like that brings into like, would help you a lot with your success towards selling a home. Cause there's, long as you're really personable and you're more about the people less than trying to make an extra buck towards giving them a home and stuff and pushing it on them. Yeah. I feel like would go a long way. Like long term would help you out a lot because right. then you get clients that will recommend you and help you out too. But yeah. Um, have you ever dealt with anybody that had to that talk to you? Yeah. Did an interview on you? Yeah. I, I think I have, um, in a roundabout way, I've, I've never, honestly, I've never really had, you know, um, somebody call me up and say, look, I'm interviewing three agents. You're one of them. Yeah. Uh, show me your best. Show me your best. <laughs> Tell me what you're going to do for me. Yeah. And how do you, how do you represent yourself? Um, I, I haven't had to do that now in the bigger cities. It happens quite a bit. Really? Like you'll get, they'll get calls. Somebody will want to interview you two or three agents and you make your best bid of, of, um, what you give and then they what decide. Are, what are they looking for? Like it's different for everybody. Um, some people are looking for a better commission rate. Um, some people are looking for honesty. Some people are looking for a connection, mm -hmm. you know, between the two people. Some people just want their house sold. Um, True. Yeah. They're just like, when it, I don't care. I'd, yeah. One and done. Let's get it. Yeah, they, they don't need the, the relationship so much. They just, they're more of a business, mm -hmm. business minded and they want it done that way. Yep. Um, and that's great. You know, then that's, that's why there's many of us and everybody, you know, we don't always get the, you don't always get the deal. Yeah, but, but that's okay because everybody's different, and not everybody jives with everybody. No, um, and everybody's a little different mind mindset towards different areas of selling homes to do. Like, exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I was in the mindset of, oh, it's all residential homes. I'm just thinking of homes and homes, but yeah, the business aspect of things, like you're like you're probably dealing with people that are trying to buy and sell and do a lot of that aspect. I don't. I don't know much about that, but no, that's okay. Cause there are different parts of real estate. Yeah. You know, so we have, we have our residential clients. So, you know, when you want to sell your house, your individual home, um, you know, we call that residential. So that's the main part of most things, but, um, there's commercial, uh, real estate as well. So if you're selling a business mm -hmm. or you're selling a, a commercial building, commercial land, um, that's a whole other aspect. And there's a few little different, you know, things that go along with that. Yeah. Um, 
if you're selling a business with a building or if it's just the building. Um, what if uh, what if you're selling a building but there's multiple rented out spaces in between? Do you almost have to talk to each renter about selling the building if you're like the building owner? If you're the owner, yes, yeah, you you would have to approach them and say, look, the building's going up for sale. Um, you know, would you like to stay? You know, their their leases would be good at least until. Uh, until the building is sold and changes hands, and then mm-hmm. new leases would have to be drawn up. Oh, okay. Um, you know, most people want to stay if they're comfortable and they're doing yep. well in that in that area, and it doesn't upset them too much. But uh, sometimes they will. Sometimes, well, I really like to enjoy working with you, but I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not willing to stay on if somebody new comes in. Yeah. And they, and they move on. Yeah. Uh, but you just give them the option, give them the heads up, and it yeah. seems seems to work pretty smoothly yeah. for the most part. Hopefully. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's all the d- main goal. All depends who you're dealing with. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I, uh, yeah, I didn't know if that, that probably happens all the time, all the time for people. Just, yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. And, and more so right now. I mean, things are, there's not a whole lot in the market. So when something does come up on the market, there's, there's several people that want to see it. Business, you know, commercial buildings, uh, residential homes. So it's a, it's a feast or famine right now. Well, yeah. Yeah. Famine really, but. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Kind of lost for questions right now. Yeah, no, that's all right. But, you know, I, I can tell you a little bit about why, um, you know, the, or what, what, what it's like to be a realtor overall. You know, um, it's, it's, and I think you, you hit it, you hit it well. Like people are looking for that glamorous piece of real estate. Like they look at, they watch the shows. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's taken a big, like, I don't know. A big growth spurt on social media like it's almost like everybody's like promoting real estate like it's the way to make uh passive income and like yeah. make a buck and you don't have to work don't have to work like, <laughs> like no seriously mm-hmm. it, there is the glamorous aspect and i didn't know i really don't know the behind the scenes of it right and yeah and it, and it's you know there are some there are some benefits to it but people don't see the hours that people spend you know, a lot of realtors spend, especially when it's busy, you know, you could be 14, 16 hour days, you know, doing paperwork, doing showings, writing offers, checking in on people, yep. um, you know, drumming up business for yourself, um, advertising, you know, those kind of things. And um, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, you know? there's a lot of preparation work. I know that for a fact, like yeah. just like hearing other people talk about it and knowing that there's, I don't know people trying to get into it and it's it's a lot more than people expect i yeah. i do know that i mean i don't understand what it's like to be in it but yeah yeah well and plus when you when you start um you don't have many clients other than the people that you know exactly right so it's it can be pretty dry for the first few months like you you know expect to not have a paycheck for the first three to four months mm-hmm. you know, same uh, for this podcast I don't, <laughs> I don't I, <laughs> right. the only people that know about it is the people that I know right but hopefully yeah. the word spreads and it grows but yeah exactly and that's how, and that's how you start I mean you've, you've got to you know be willing to to take a hit up front and and do your leg work and and call your friends family yeah um, and people you don't know sometimes just gotta, to check in you got to find that balancing point of don't be too naggy but you want to keep pushing like that's to get right. your name out <laughs> yeah y- y- if you don't ask for the business you won't get it exactly you know? exactly and you know, and and now there's with the internet and and social media I mean, there's so many different ways to put your name out there you know there's facebook instagram you know youtube yep um you know and and s- some people still use the old newspapers and yeah well that's a know? different clientele right there right yeah. so you're yeah. dealing with all these older people and that's still a huge market for some people if it you get, is if you get the right uh i don't know it's all about the right approach and yeah if you can do it that's it's right. there yeah. everything's there it's just like it's so true. Yeah. Just, just making a name for yourself. And, and it's constant learning. It is. It's like maybe yeah. you're used to dealing with like new couples all the time. It's going to be different if you start getting in the commercial and then you're just going to be like, whoa, I got to start preparing on this side of things. And right. I feel like it's never ending learning. Like you're constantly learning. Yeah, that's true. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> and there's always a new situation that comes up that you have to deal with, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, and that's certainly... I've certainly learned a lot that way. Yeah. You know, comes Eight up, years, you've seen a lot, but you're still probably going to get hit with some stuff in the next few years that are like, oh, I've never seen this before. No question. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've talked to agents that have been in the business for 30 years and have dealt with the same thing. You know, just they always find something new that comes up that they've never dealt with before. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, 
Yeah, it is. It's it's a, it's a good business, but it's you know it's difficult and and you know it it, it costs money too. Like any business, you got to put money out to yep. uh, to make business. And yeah, I, very few are nonprofit. Very few. Right. <laughs> very few businesses out there. That's right. Um, yeah. Is there any is there any tragedies to real estate? Like, what are some issues you'll come up with? Like, I don't know. I can't think of any negatives that you're running into being a real estate. I think a lot of it is, uh, for me, is finding um, finding some balance in life because real estate is one of those things that just doesn't really shut off Yeah, you're unless, unless you make it shut off. Can you drive by a house and appreciate it for being a house or do you, <laughs> do you just drive by and think like, oh, yeah, I wonder if I could <laughs> sell that. Yeah. yeah. yeah you open the door. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, uh, I can. And, and um, you know, I certainly am getting better at mm-hmm. You know, at, at making time for myself, and my family, and, and those kind of things. It's, yeah. But it's not easy because you, you want to do everything you can for your clients. You want to make sure that they're well looked after. You want to answer the phone when you as quickly as you can yeah. and get back to them. Um, but you also need to, you know, the reason you're in real estate is to kind of to better your life a little bit and it's something you enjoy and yeah. you help and serve you know, the clients that you have. But um, you know, with doing all that extra work and and things, you're hoping to get a little bit out of it on the side so you can. You can enjoy some of those things, and yeah, and uh, with the time that you do have off, you can, you can enjoy it. It's almost like the way you want to. It's almost like investing in a sense. Like, yeah, you're in. You put a lot of money and time into the first ten years, and then hopefully, as the years go on long term, it kind of fade not fades out, but it's worth your time and money, and then you get to enjoy life a little more. Right. That's kind of the plan, I imagine. But yeah, it's the it's the crunch time for the first few years of really getting down to business and staying on top of it but that's really hard the balance everything's balanced like Mm -hmm. i guess you could use anything as an example but starting any business you're gonna have to spend the first three years just fully devoted and it's hard to spend time with family and especially when you have kids i'm I'm 20 years old i don't have any responsibilities at the moment but (laughs) um but i'm sure there will be a few years from now that things start to pile up and that yeah that balance will be tough and and like you said, it's it's at, when you're first into it, you, you have to understand that that balance is going to be one sided. Like it's not you're not going to have that balance. You're going to be you're going to be doing fourteen, sixteen hour days. You got to talk to your family and say, hey, look, I'm I'm not going to be here for that event. Yeah, I'm I'm working. I have to serve my clients. I've got to build up my base. Yeah, you know, and then eventually you can you can start to you know use your time a little wiser and 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 manage that. Whether it's growing and, and getting a buyer's agent or a, uh, an admin support that's going to look after some of your paperwork for you, mm-hmm. you know that kind of takes some of the time yeah. back for you. Yep, you pay for your time. Is that a is that a tough call to talk to the family and be like, hey, I'm I'm going to be busy for the next like week or so, uh, just like working away? Is that like a I don't know? Does that I guess it's kind of deep, but does that hurt a little bit to be like, oh, I can't be there? Yeah, it does. Sometimes it does. Yeah. You know, they're, they're off. It's a nice hot summer day and they're heading to the lake or they're heading, you know, heading to the beach with, with the, with the other family or meeting up and yep. you just can't go. You know, you've got yeah. a, an open house. So, I mean, open houses are unheard of in the last couple of years. But yeah. I was going to, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I totally forgot about it, but yeah. what is an open house? I've never even seen an open house before. Okay. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. So Nothing. Open house is <laughs> basically when a house is listed for sale. Um, the selling agent uh, gets permission from the from the sellers to to host an open house at their home. Mm-hmm. So you'll advertise that an, op- an open house will happen. Let's say Sunday. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting a call. No, no problem. So, uh. so open house was um, so you'd, 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 you would get that from two to four. Let's say on a Sunday. So you would start with um, you know advertising it and saying, hey, look, I'm we're gonna have an open house. Which basically means you're going to open the house. Uh, you'll be at the open house, so I, I would be at the open house. Is multiple agents there? Just me. Oh, just you. Just me. So okay. I, so I would come there. Agents are welcome to bring their clients. Oh, okay, yeah. Know, so they now we do get a lot of the times it's it's usually just people coming in mm-hmm. into the house. So um, could be new buyers, uh, people looking, and some people have agents already that they're you know they're hey look we're gonna, we're going to go look at this and yep. we'll, we'll get back to you. So they'll come back, they'll come in, look around the house, see if they like it. I'll hand out flyers. I usually have, you know, something to snack on. Or yeah. Do they ask you lots drink. of questions? Do yeah, some do. Like yeah. They'll ask me, you know, um, 
when was the roof completed last or you know how how old are the appliances or how mm-hmm. big is the lot yeah something. you really got to know the house yeah, <laughs> yeah. so you, you do your best i mean i don't know all the answers all the time no and and i think that's just where it's best to be honest and say look i don't know that but if i if you give me your name and number i'll find it out for yep. you and and get back to them as quickly as you can yeah yeah i guess I guess now that you're talking about open house, my, I do know that my mom went to one one time, and <laughs> I also I was doing a little bit of reading. And open houses are usually on the weekend, so you almost have to give up your weekend a little bit. I, I could be wrong, but I did yep. read that a lot of times it's on the weekend, so you're almost going to have to give up the weekend to get those extra clients and your name out there, yep. for, and especially for the first little while if you're trying to do as many as you can. Yeah, no, well, you're exactly right. And and the thing is too is a lot of people are you know, work during the week, right? They're Monday to Friday. You know, mm-hmm. if you're in that crowd, yeah. then Saturday, Sundays are your days to look. Yep. Right, and your days to be out. So us as realtors, we have to be available for those people on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, so we open them up. You know, a lot of the time it's 1 to 3, 2 to 4, maybe 11 to 1. Yep. Uh, just where people are, you get a chance to people to get up and get their breakfast. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? No, yeah. Get their coffee and... They'll grab a coffee and come in and see you. And yeah, yeah. No, it's and it's a good way for for realtors to to build clients too. So if we have people coming in and they don't, they're not represented by another agent, mm-hmm. then maybe you can you can talk to them and build a relationship and say, hey, look, let's maybe we can work together. Yeah, yeah. contact me. Let me know. Yeah. So here's my card. You know, I'll take. Uh, are you dealing with a lot of people through the phone? Like, are you constantly texting people? And yeah, yeah. The phone is that's it doesn't leave your side. Yeah, it's nonstop, eh? Yeah. When you're when it's busy, you know you've got to. How do you manage that? How do you manage? Is it just sporadic, or is there is there a is. system to it? <laughs> well, it's. I think I could probably use a little better of a system. <laughs> you know, there for sure. And and I'm learning. You know, that's mm-hmm. okay. Hey, um, even put put something on. If somebody's calling, I could say, Hey, look, just send me a text. I'm in a meeting, or I'm with a client. Like I have on my phone. I'll just if somebody's calling, I have sorry, I can't call now, I'm with a client. Mm-hmm. So that'll send directly back to them. They know where I'm at. They know that I'm I'm not avoiding them when I'm working with another client. Yeah. Um, so things like that are, are nice little tricks of the trade that you yeah. can use to... No, that helps out for yeah. sure. So you're not avoiding them. You know, you're, yep. just, you're just busy. You're yeah, just, you're just busy. <laughs> just yeah. um, being in the dog service business, uh, it's the same as the trust with the house. Is like, I have a dog service business and... Dealing with the clients, you're not only dealing with like basically their child as a dog, but you're dealing with their house as well. And like that's mm-hmm. two very important things to like think about when you're mm-hmm. going into someone's home and like taking their dog for a walk is like almost their whole private life is in your hands for that hour or the two hours or however long you have their dog. Right. And it'd be the same as real estate is like from opening my house up to you. <laughs> like right. there's a response. Yeah. That and other people that. are seeing my home like hopefully we can trust you and the people that you bring in and exactly. that's a yeah well you i mean if you don't then you know you, you'll end up losing business yeah right and and, and your credibility is is everything mm-hmm. uh, if you don't have credibility then you really have nothing like if you don't have trust yep you know um it, it goes it goes by pretty quickly oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> easy to break yeah hard to fix <laughs> exactly yeah so, you, so how long have you been doing your dog business uh about five months okay yeah how's that going for you exciting yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, Good. Um, I guess it's like a challenge. I guess I just like I like to learn more, mm-hmm. and yeah, I I have a very competitive attitude towards things. And there's an app called Rover. Okay, it's like a it's a dog service business, but it's an app, and then they're like all over the cities, all over like North America. Yeah, but I want to take over that. I'm telling the YouTube here first. I'm going to take over it. <laughs> That's great. I would love to. I'd love to just do a complete dog service, food, everything, and just have it as much as possible. But uh, with the business, I love the aspect of, like, the new challenges that come with it and, like, trying to learn more and to grow something. And it never stops learning. It's just like any job, right? Well, yeah. most jobs. Yeah. It's just nonstop learning, and I love it. But it's going good. Uh more and more clients every day and it's the same as it's the same as yours well every week sorry not every day (laughs) every week we've been getting more clients and it's it's the same as your phone it's just constant checking Mm -hmm. messaging customers they always have questions always letting you know something about 
whatever they need to let you know about from homes to I guess I can get into detail like most people are very friendly when it comes to the situation of their home or their especially in the winter here in Canada like their driveways and like and then they let you know about their dog or and they're like oh we'll just do a little bit of walking today we won't do anything crazy and then yeah. <laughs> but no it's it's really fun and kind of opens your mind and I like meeting new people that's yeah. the biggest thing is um yeah just meeting new people is so fun yeah it is. I just love building the connection that's why I'm doing this I d- I'm pretty person oriented so yeah, I love just are. I yeah. just love dealing with people and learn about them and interesting people just like yourself. Oh, I thanks. Just, yeah, I, 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 I love it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, it's, uh, my wife gets uh, <laughs> gets tired of me talking to people in the mall <laughs> and, you know, it's like, hurry up, Sean, let's get going. Yeah, you're the I opposite. Just, <laughs> I, just, I just find people so intriguing and you can you can have such great conversations just out of the blue. No, Meeting seriously. somebody at the mall. Yep. You just, you're getting coffee and you're in line and you just end up with sparking a conversation and yeah no it's it goes. it's amazing yeah. yeah and not everybody's open to that and it's harder now because of covid yes yeah but uh mm-hmm. covid has definitely showed us that we we miss the human interaction right. i think that's what i think is we really miss it yeah we do um i don't know when it's going to end oh it's been good for some people that is not on the oh no. you want to put that on the watch your elbow there i don't want to knock over that Sorry, hopefully it's facing me yeah, perfect. It's good enough. We're good. I think it's uh Yeah, it's all right. It's on the dots. We won't worry about it. Okay. It's half of my face, it's okay. No, it's I it's, can check. No, it's it's looking at me, okay. I think. <laughs> Let me check. Okay. Watch your back there. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm really I'm really excited. And uh, I wanna see how far I can go with this yeah. this podcast. I I just wanna and through each person that I have, a lot of people will be able to uh, refer to more people that maybe have some interesting stories or interesting mm-hmm. information to know. Uh, I really want to build my knowledge. Just like, so whenever somebody speaks to me about anything, I want to know something about it. Yeah. And I guess that's just for personal, personal uh, goals, I guess, but. Yeah. I, I think this is great. Like what what you're doing, like you took the time to set all this up and yeah, I tried to make a I tried to make a comfortable area to yeah. keep it kind of cozy. I but it's cool too. It's trendy. Like it's, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I like but it. I, Thank I you. Think Appreciate it. You know, but at your age to be able to start something like this and 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 move forward with something that you like takes a lot of guts, and I think it's great. Yeah. Thank you. Know? you. I really appreciate yeah, it. No, no it's, it's I appreciate really cool. it. It's uh, yeah. um. It is a nerve-wracking feeling, and then putting yourself on camera is a little scary, especially yeah. at a young age, um, and not knowing very much. Like, I really don't have much to talk about, yeah. and I really don't have much knowledge, because the more you get older, you experience more things, and you have a better understanding of things, but through this podcast, I'll be able to understand a lot of aspects of different people's situations, and then I can apply it in my own life somehow. Yeah, and, and I think e- even the people you invite, like you invited me, and you know, I get to learn a few things about you. you yeah. You're teaching me a few things. And, and I'm, your your generation, I think, is, uh, you know, uh, just so involved with information. Like, it's, mm-hmm. inf- it's social media, social media, you know, like, it, yep. you know, whether it's all good information or not. But yeah, that's but, <laughs> but a lot of it is. And I, I think you guys can, you know, have a, have a neat way of looking at the world, too. Yeah, it is. It's good, but there's a lot of downfall. Mm-hmm. Like mental health has been taking a big toll, and I think I think Huge. because of it, yeah. social media and phones is like a big reason mental health is taking a toll. Agreed. Especially, like, say for an example, you're living this extravagant real estate life. Say you have forty six homes, and you're making all this money, millions of dollars, and like I'm looking at you like that, and I'm like, oh, I want, I want that, I want what he has, I right. want that, I want that, I want that, and then comparing your me to you. And then I'm taking all my life and looking like downplaying it and being like, oh, Sean has way more than me. Mm. That's that really takes a toll on people. That's that's kind of what I got my aspect of like social media, like the bad side of it. But the good side is like brings a lot of awareness to situations, especially Mm -hmm. if there is a problem in the world and we need to spread the information quickly. It's in the world in two hours. Right. And it's it's sorting within your own set of ethics or morals of what 
what I'm, what are you seeing when you're seeing what are you seeing on there that's actually legit? Mm-hmm. What makes sense? To you? What is it? Like there's so much, there's so many different twists yep. on each story. Mm-hmm. Which one's right? You I know. And you got to figure it out. There's a. Uh, I I was listening to somebody. I forget his name. Uh, but he was talking about how when you go on Google, it actually. I think it takes out all the negative searches. So it's only positive searches. So when you search something, it takes out all the negative searches and it only leaves positive. Like, uh, I don't know how to explain that. But I do know that whoever controls like what you're searching into, it will guide you to think a certain belief. So uh, I'm trying to think of an example. So there, so Google itself is, is kind of pushing you. Yeah, to think a certain way. To sort of think, a so certain way. think a certain way. So it's almost, even if you weren't going to think about, oh, I wish I could explain more and have an example. Like they have certain algorithms. That yeah, and it, it pushes you to be just that single way of thinking. Does that make sense? Yeah. So everybody that searches that topic or are searching this direction, it's almost putting everybody in that same mindset Okay. of that thought-provoking search or that subject okay. does that make sense yeah it does I, I just i'm not familiar with it but I'm, i know i can imagine i need to do more research does. but yeah um there are some uh search engines that you can do that aren't uh pushing you towards one way okay. i don't know how much okay. google is and i don't know much about it but i do think that say like the government was involved and like I don't know liberals and I don't know anything about politics but <laughs> say they were trying to push a thir- a certain uh <sighs> agenda like a yeah just like a I really wish I knew more information about it but that's all right yeah anyways it's it's a good thing thing to think about cuz say you are searching about houses or real estate like Google might push you in one way thinking a one way of thinking instead of maybe branching into other aspects of thinking about real estate and other, uh, I just, I don't know enough to really speak about it, but yeah. And I wouldn't either Mitchell. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you. yeah. Yeah. I'll have to have an expert on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, fine. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, I'm but sure be some people that'll claim to be experts. So yeah. But maybe that gives perspective mm-hmm. on the people listening too. is like, Oh, yeah. maybe what I'm searching is kind of, pushing me to think a certain only one way and there's other ways to think about what i'm doing or what i'm looking up i guess well and i, and I think this process that you've embarked upon is certainly going to bring you you know um some enlightenment on different topics because you will bring you will bring other people in and everybody's got different perspectives mm-hmm. everybody's got different experiences oh yeah right so you'll you'll hear those you'll be able to form your own um ideas Yep. And about some of these things that you're even talking about now. Yeah. I don't know much about it either. I, yeah. but, but if you and I were to, to, to do this conversation and then we listen to another podcast that you have with somebody else, we gain a little more perspective. Mm-hmm. And then you start to build that repertoire of knowledge. Yeah. You know, so uh, this is, it's, it's just a great forum to be able to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 No. I'm really excited. I'm so excited. I'm just glad that you're the first person. It's it's awesome. Yeah, I'm happy. Good. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm too. Yeah, yeah no, good. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's a lot of fun, and you know, there's you can start to get because I'm I'm not worldly knowledgeable as well. Like I mm-hmm. I I should be or should be, but I guess I I think I should be, um, you know, a little more knowledgeable maybe in the politics side. Like what what do the parties represent what do yeah you know those kind of things i don't know a whole lot about those Me so I, I'm, <laughs> I'm ignorant and I, I claim it you know it's, yeah. it's um, not always something that i i'm proud of but mm-hmm. um you know you try to put your energies in so many places and um i just want to be able to to put them in that's going to something that's going to give me life or bring me life and joy with you know focus my energies on those yep um, um I guess my attitude was always like, even if I don't enjoy something, I try to learn. I try to learn the aspect. Like I'm really not a car person. Mm -hmm. Like I have certain cars that I like, but like the whole aspect of cars and how they run and 
like I really don't know anything about it. But if right. someone starts teaching me something, I like change my mindset of like I'm not really enjoying this to what can I find that I'm really interested. Like mm-hmm. show me everything and I'm going to just try to do my best to learn as much as I can of what you're teaching me. Right. And I I guess that was when I got out of high school, that was kind of my attitude. It was like, oh, I need to learn more and I want to learn more. And right. I think that's a good attitude to have, but um, I don't know where I'm going with this at all. Well, no, but, <laughs> but you, don't, you don't need to know everything either. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and we never will know everything. No. And there's certain things you're just not going to be interested in. True. <laughs> you know, so, so why spend your energy on, on things that you're not fully interested in? I think it's in, it's it may be fun to explore. Yeah. But then, you know, through that exploration, you may realize, oh, man, I'm, this is like I, I really don't want to know any more about this car. Yeah, true. I'll, I'll go yeah. see my mechanic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and let them nope. look after it, you know, yep. and, and and pay the people that love to do it. Mm-hmm. Fix your car, you know, and if it's something you love, then hey, continue on with it. Yeah. Figure it out. I think my love is f- to learn, which kind of helps. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. So if I could pay a mechanic to show me, <laughs> so he fixes ah, it to show me how to fix it. Gotcha. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. I don't know about you, but I'm more of a hands-on learner. Mm-hmm. I have to. If somebody tells me what it is, I can't I can't picture it in my mind. But if somebody shows me, okay, that's the part right there. Yeah. This goes into here. Mm-hmm. I I will probably remember that. Yeah. No, me too. I'd but, be the same way. You know, or if I can do uh, here, okay, you do it. Okay. Yeah. Then let me. I'm uh. I would say I'm. <clears throat> I think I'm a little bit of like three, a little bit of hands on with a little bit of visual with a little bit of audio. I think if I get audio and visual. I'll be able to do it hands on, no problem. But if I just do hands on, I'll be all right. I think okay. I'll just I'll still understand the whole aspect. Yeah. Um, I think that's my way of learning. But how do you really know? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's certain tests that you can do. Yeah. You know, to to find out where you're more suited or where you know what you're. And I don't know what I'm trying to think. There's different personality tests like the DISC. Um, I don't I don't know what that is, but you can be trained in it. Mm-hmm. personalities and, and just ways of learning. But uh, through my social work degree, we've done several of those things of where personalities, what kind of learnings you are. Um, but like I said, I can't remember the exact tool that they used. But, yeah. But there are things available. Yeah. To kind of help you maybe see where you where you lean and what's what's easier. What, what style do you yeah. gravitate towards? What helps you the best. And you can honestly, you can do it through trial and error too. Right. But yeah. that's a... If you don't want to put in the effort, then <laughs> <laughs> That's just true. do a little quick test and then see where you're at. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, and again, not everybody learns through audio. Like, not everybody's going to learn through this podcast. Some right. people need to see it, and some people need to actually just go do it. That's why I wanted to do, like, hopefully in the future. Maybe I'm giving out my secrets, but to do the podcast and then on YouTube, like, do the video aspect of what we talked about. So we're talking about real estate and then we, I can, I can almost like, for an example, we could film what we're doing in an open house. What kind of your mindset's, go, what's going on? Or maybe we go observe a, a open house. It'd yeah. be super fun to do. But yeah. again, that's way more time and way more planning and that's a lot of effort, but right. it'd be fun. It'd be yeah. really fun. And people would learn more probably because not everybody can picture like, oh, you have someone's like. I think most people can, but you have someone's house and then there's a bunch of people walking around and you're just like, you're sitting there eating popcorn and <laughs> asking people asking you questions. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And then, but yeah. Yeah. No, there's, there's, you know, and certain jobs would be, would be easier. Like with real estate, you'd have to be, you know, even with video, you'd have to get permission probably from the homeowner. Yep. You know, those kind of things just to have video in their house. Did you have to go through a lawyer to get proof of video? Like, or how, uh, is it just kind of consent thing? Well, we'd, we'd have representatives through the, through our brokers and then through the, um, the Brunswick Real Estate Association that would kind of guide us on that if we were to bring videos in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we get permission from the homeowners if we want to do videos. So, you know, can we do a FaceTime video? Can we do a virtual tour? you know, um, of the house and we'll bring a videographer in or do a video ourselves. And, yep. um, and so we can use it for, for videotaping and things. Yeah. But One thing I actually don't like about the whole real estate is <laughs> when you go on those websites and it's like the 3d version of the house and you can like click your way around. Yeah. I find it never works for me. Every <laughs> time it's just like 
It's just like the I, little I, circles. The yeah, and I like run into port. I yeah. like run into the bo- wall or something, and then I can't get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I want to look at more of the house, but right. Um, I actually really want to, in hopefully a few years to come, uh, build a house. Okay. And I just didn't know if I really didn't know if you needed a real estate agent to go through that. And I'm. I yeah, know. no, you you don't. I mean, it depends. Like if the land is listed, then you would. Mm-hmm. You know, you would need to go through that because the the owners enlisted the the services of a realtor. Yeah. So you would either use the listing realtor or, or have if you have a realtor that can represent you. Okay. And um, you know that would be that would be part of it. And uh, if you had a certain builder, then maybe that that agent could approach a builder and say, "Hey, look, I got a I got a guy coming here uh, that would like to build a house." Can I set you up with him and mm-hmm. and um, and see what you see how you fare out? Have you dealt with anybody building a house before? Yeah, yeah, um, and it's it seems to work out pretty well. Uh, you just kind of keep in touch with them and see how they're making out. Like once, like I said, once you get, excuse me, the um, you know the little uh, the initial um, sale done, so you, you figure out what they're you know how much they're. They want to pay. You, you come to a certain price. Most builders are fixed on their price because they have their materials already costed mm-hmm. out. They they know how much it's basically going to cost for labor yeah. to build that property in that um, you know pay for the land, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, hook up their services, um, so they're pretty firm usually on their prices. Um, you get that done, and then you fix them up with the whoever's the listing agent is, or the, even the builder themselves, and then they go over through and figure out. Okay, well, I want you know I want white tiles. In, in, as a backsplash, I want certain flooring, cabinets, all mm-hmm. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's you know, it, it depends on how big you want to build. True. You know, you may be able, you may want to build it yourself. Yeah. You know, you seem like a pretty okay. inquisitive guy. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'll figure it out. I'll have somebody to explain the whole process of building a house for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, land, clear it, foundation, <laughs> pack the dirt down. No. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. I uh, do you know the? I was actually talking to Jane about this. Uh, barn Barndon, barn dominiums. Do you know barn those style? Dominiums. Do you know those style of homes? It's like a farmhouse, but it's usually a garage that's attached to it, or it's kind of like this, or okay. a house built out of a barn yep. or an old barn. So you'd be, sometimes you'll have the garage underneath, and then the the living space. Yep. At yep. The top. You can have a loft. It, there's yeah. so many different aspects. You can just have a big garage, and then the house kind of just attached to it, and there's just a door, and you walk right into this massive almost warehouse garage yep. there's so many different aspects or you can just have literally a barn and make it into a home on the inside and right. i fell in love with that style of home that's kind of cool and it's it's a nice shape too like it's just an an interesting i think you can do lots of lots of different things with that yeah design i think there's just yeah. i don't know a lot of character into that style of home that's mm-hmm. just what i gravitate towards is everybody's different maybe somebody likes a small little bungalow and oh, yeah. some people love the 16 floor apartments or whatever they <laughs> whatever they well, want right yeah the condos and mm-hmm. yeah everybody is is so different yeah so. And we're actually getting apartments here soon oh yeah we are or yeah yeah down by shoppers yeah i'm really excited yeah. just to see what that that just goes to show like sussex is expanding it, it is do we have a lot of do we have a lot of potential to expand oh i think so like i know the vacancy rate here in sussex for apartments is next to nothing which means, you know, there's there's more, uh, there's no apartments available for people that are looking. So really? So on a month-to-month basis, there's apartments are full. Yeah. I guess I can only think of, including the one that's built, I can only think of like four other buildings that are known, like that are, I guess, being used on the regular and renting in and out all the time. But yeah, um, yeah well, I guess we don't have that much for rent. Do more people want to rent? Or do more people want to go through a home? I, th- I think a lot of people, most people, I think if they had the choice, would would buy a house. Yeah. And have it make their own. Um, some people would prefer to rent, and you know they they can save some money on property tax, and they don't have to worry about maintenance and. Okay. You know, you know so so there's I mean there's a lot of people that will rent their homes out as well, like they'll rent basement apartments. Um, yeah, I had a friend places. that uh, you know Alan and Tim McCamus. Yep. At, uh, commercial tents. Yep. Um, a relative of theirs, I think through marriage or something, they uh, they always rented out their home every year for the summer students that would come and work for them for the summer. And there was just okay. a, b- there was like a 
six room basement down there and a kitchen and everything and they just rented it out to like six guys every every summer yes sir. they did that forever and i i yeah. think it's still i think it's still down there but they moved out of that house now but it worked yeah. out perfect yeah for it's a great way to make some passive income and, yeah and pay some of your mortgage and or all of it yep and you it know. saves uh other people a headache too especially your friends and if they want to come in and i don't know just have a secure place to live for a little bit and to be like oh i just have to pay you this much a month and that's it yeah which just helps a lot yeah i'd love to have some if i ever did build a house i would love to have some friends over for a little bit pay a little bit of mo money but <laughs> yeah that's right yeah no but yeah. Key. they gotta live somewhere exactly right you have to and everybody's gotta live somewhere whatever you can do to help out and if i'm still young when i get the house then or the barn dominium <laughs> <laughs> hey that's great then uh yeah it'd be a fun uh fun little experience too yeah no absolutely a, and it's a, it's a challenging market right now. I mean, there's um, you know we have a lot of influence coming in from outside of the Maritimes. Yeah, a lot of people are moving in from Ontario, BC, Quebec. Um, you know, they're they're moving here. They see uh, we're like the diamond in the rough. I think New Brunswick and and the Maritimes in general. Is and it because of the land and the trees and all that? The land lifestyle. They they understand that you know we're not sandwiched together in houses. You know, you're not paying. Four hundred thousand dollars for a seven hundred twenty foot square, twenty foot, yeah. twenty square foot condo that you're living with two kids and yep. COVID's going on. And yep. <laughs> where do you take the kids? And you gotta make a make a session with your make it a an appointment to get down the elevator. Mm -hmm. You know they're they're saying no, thank you. And and Our, uh, say people living in the city and they realize like oh New Brunswick's kind of more a little more freeing, especially due to COVID. Like you're not sitting right beside somebody else yeah. there's a lot of space in between each person given the, the amount of land we have and the people but um oh i lost my train of thought <laughs> that's all right <laughs> great <laughs> uh oh do you think uh do you think like new brunswick will be lacking jobs especially people that are in the city that want to move into here from wherever they're moving from because i do know some people from like bc came to sussex yeah and they moved here but i i don't know if new brunswick would have the amount of jobs as other provinces maybe that's the wrong approach i guess of thinking but well i think it's it's now that we're bringing in more people you know there's more infrastructure being built you know i know the trades for sure are definitely you know there's many jobs in the trades that need to be picked up right now mm-hmm so if, if some people can come in from out of town and fill those jobs, then hey, that's great because it's only going to help. It's only going to help the local business owners, you know, maintain their business, their level of business, and um, you know, just keep them rolling. Yep. So, I don't. I don't think that's going to be going to going to be a big problem. Um, but I certainly uh, I see this trend going to happen for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're they're coming in and. They want to be here, and they're boosting the market, and it's it's really. I think the way that my broker described it was really, we've been we've been behind in New Brunswick on the market side in terms of pricing and things for for quite a while, mm -hmm. and this is kind of bringing it to where it should have been years ago. Oh, okay, so yeah. We've kind of pushed it to where you know people are now. We're, we've had an influx of people coming in, mm -hmm. and the housing market has jumped. 30 percent in the last two years and um, so it's kind of i don't think it's going to ever go back to where it was like i think we're, we're probably hit a new normal mm -hmm. yeah a lot of people have complained about prices as houses yeah. are going up it's always going up and i yeah. it's always going to go up there's no way it's not well it's it's you know this quick it's the quick jump right people can people can manage gradual yep you know increase in prices but when you go 30% mm -hmm. in two in, years. Yeah. Uh, huge. It's a quick jump. Huge. And not everybody's making like more of a wage every year and that's right. Getting all, yeah, getting that extra stuff towards their life to be able to afford 30% of a house more expensive. <laughs> right. And it's going to have, so the, the, eventually the wages are going to have to reflect that. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll have to, inflation is going to have to kick in and we're going to have to start doing that in order for you want to afford these, yep. this, this lifestyle. I always had a, I don't know if it's much of a conspiracy theory, but I feel that eventually everybody will have to go to school 
to university and college in order to like f- fill the needs of their lives. Like it's almost going to be forced to get to school because I don't think a minimum wage job is going to be able to supply you enough to really live. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it will ever get to that point, but it it's definitely closer today than it was 10, 20 years ago. And I, I don't know if yeah. it will ever get to the point where, I don't know, a non-educated, like uneducated, not uneducated, but just like they didn't go to post-secondary school that they can make enough to do their do with means of like eating somewhat good. And I, I mean, I think it's it, it is tough. And I know um, I was just talking to a buddy of mine. We were playing hockey this morning. We we're sitting on the bench having a chat and and um, we were talking when this this topic came up. But even for for new buyers that are coming in that, um, you know, younger people, they're saving their money for a down payment for a house. Well, before, when if you want to buy a hundred fifty thousand dollar home, you know you you could you could do that. But now, the pr- what a hundred fifty thousand dollar home looks like as opposed to two years ago, even yeah, is is a big difference. Yep. <laughs> and, and so you're to get the same kind of home, you're going to spend close to two hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. uh, for that same house that was one hundred fifty thousand two years ago. So, a lot of people that don't get in the market soon it's going to be tough for them to get in at all. Yeah. Unless, you know, the, the jo- their job gets gets better and they start inc- mm-hmm. having more income. It is, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. But I know you were talking about, you know, you think people will have to go to university and, and uh, college more. I, I'm not sure. I think, I think, I think the young people of this are going to see some of the flaws in university. A l- yeah. It's definitely got the backlash of like you don't need an education to m- to make means of life and d- mm-hmm. do your own thing because businesses are just skyrocketing and everything is just yeah. the entrepreneurship of life I guess is really taking a toll. But yeah, and I think and I think younger people these this day and age are a little more risk. They're 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 willing to take a risk and, mm-hmm. and start that business and. Um, you know, I could be mistaken, but I, I think that's that's the trend. And I think that now the internet offers lots of education. Oh yeah. If you're willing to look at it, and I mean, I know there's free courses on Google. Like you can learn to become IT mm-hmm. and train. And <laughs> yeah. And and I I know from talking to some IT guys, and my brother-in-law is one of them, and and they won't even you don't even if you can prove to them that you can do the uh, the programming, mm-hmm. they don't need a degree. Yeah. Come work with us. Here, here you go. Here's your here's your hundred and twenty thousand dollar, you know, job salary. Yeah. Salary <laughs> here, and here's your thirty thousand dollar signing bonus. Yeah. Like, if you can develop that skill on your own, um, you know, studying studying those kind of things with anything with computer related or through yep. the internet and you know investing and yep. starting your own business, uh, I th- I think there's going to be less people seeing uh, going to universities. In the future, mm-hmm. I mean, the trades you, you need to, you know, you need to have that, that piece. But yeah, and a university is if you want to be a doctor, you got to go to university. If you want to be a lawyer, you want to yep. be a social worker. I mean, certain things you have to go to university for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think a lot of people are going to tend to look to self, uh, self educate themselves. And the, and just seeing like the amount of possibilities there are, and then it's continuing to grow. Like, there's going to be so much more. Uh, not subjects, but so much more opportunities to do something completely new to the world. Like there's probably something being invented today that will be like a mainstream thing in like three years, probably I'm guessing like, look at podcasting. I guess Joe Rogan started it. Technically he just (laughs) started talking to his friends and look where that, where it's at now. There's hundreds, if not millions of podcasts out there now. So it is pretty crazy. What's out there and what's, available yeah. um tesla as well mm-hmm. they you don't need an education to work there yeah anybody can apply not necessarily you're going to get the job but that's right any you don't need an education which is which is a cool mindset and elon musk has has uh tweeted out many times about like school and stuff which and the amount of people he has influenced yeah. which is a lot of people in this world <laughs> right. yeah. so yeah maybe school is Maybe not, I don't know, not necessarily falling back, but there is still a lot of people that 
we'll just get the education and s- s- kind of do the more routine of things in life, I guess. Mm-hmm. Which is nothing, nothing wrong with it, honestly. No, that's right. It's the best. It's honestly the best way to be because <laughs> it's yeah. like so much less stress. I feel like <laughs> you just <laughs> you just go with the flow. Yeah, just go with the flow and get your education and yeah. find a job you thoroughly enjoy and. Well, and I've I've researched a little bit into some of the even some of the European countries, and you know there's Finland, Sweden, mm-hmm. Germany, and they're much they're much further ahead than we are. Yeah, I heard their school education is unbelievably like yeah. unbelievably good. Most of it's free. All of their extracurriculars for their universities are free. Really, or or close to free. Um, you know they pay high taxes. You know that's that covers some of the mm-hmm. some of the thing, but. And, and more of their education, and I know that they have you know, university education as well, but their university educations are geared, like you're, if you're doing a psychology degree, you're doing a psychology degree. Yeah. You're taking psychology courses. You're very rarely do you have to take other. Curricular uh, activities. Like I do well, know. Not, not curricular activities, but other courses. Like or, you, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. You wouldn't have to take like a French or you wouldn't have to take a, yeah. uh, something that you're really not interested in. I do they, know. They focus. I do know somebody that's taking it like biology and they have to take just to get like an extra cr- class and they have to just take art or something. Yeah. And it's, that's not really focused on, unless you're drawing like the human anatomy, then maybe, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I that's, don't know. That's one thing that I found frustrating about university is that, you know, yeah, I like this topic, but, and, and, it, and it is, it kind of makes you a little well-rounded and in certain, I mean, I, I can understand, mm-hmm. you know, you, you learn different thought processes and, and, yep. and all that. But I still like, if you want to keep somebody in focus and, and energized, yeah, show them, teach them, keep them in the stream of yeah, what they they're like, interested in, what they like, like, yeah, and you know, I think that's just more practical and it gets them out in the world to eat quicker. Yeah, like if you can do a degree in three, two and a half years mm-hmm. because you're doing a psychology degree, and that's all you do is psychology, then hey, great. Yeah, you know, um, why why do I need to take French? Why do I need to take Sociology. I mean, now sociology would be an, a nice, you know, some of those courses would certainly um, be an advantage, I guess, or, or, or complement a nice complement yeah. to psychology, um, just be with the, your train of thinking and, and those kind of things. And, and I'm I'm no professor, and I, and I haven't studied, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the reasons be why they make you do that, and maybe there is a really good reason for that, is and and it is to make you more well rounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking one time. And he did say, he's like, when you're in school and you're you're doing math, you're thinking, when am I ever going to use this again? Mm-hmm. He was saying like the Pyth- Pythagorean theorem. That's honestly the one that you will use again. But <laughs> right. but uh, a lot of people look at class, and I've heard it a million times when I was in high school. Was oh, when am I ever going to use this in my life? But then Neil deGrasse Tyson said that having that attitude towards that you're not only taking away uh, the like the knowledge of that subject, but you're also taking away the the thinking process of how to get the answer to that subject, which is a different way of thinking, which yeah. you may apply to something else, not only math, right? Yeah. So any... Uh, problem solving. Exactly, yeah. a different way of problem solving. And you're not going to use math necessarily, that thinking, like that problem solving technique but you could apply it to something completely different and not realize it. But taking that away of thinking, oh, I'm never going to use this. You're taking away the thought process of getting that answer, and then that's not going to help you with other further things in life, I guess. Right. Does and that make sense? Yeah, and, and maybe we should be in our, in our education systems be looking to, to teach people, teach our, our children um, how to problem solve. Like, mm-hmm. You know, and, and say, hey, look, I know this is hard, but this is about problem solving because yep. in life there's problems every day that we got to fix. It could be, you know, just how do I put my boots on? Like, yeah. You know, how do I manage my money? How do I, how do I budget? How do I yep. work through these, these problems with, with another person? Which is what you were saying. Like the school system, uh, I, know, I know you were saying like taxes and it kind of helps with like being interested, but the style of teaching is so important too. Not only is it because I think I think Finland and Switzerland and what you were saying, the European company or countries, uh, or is it continent? <laughs> you, 
yeah, Europe is is a continent. But yeah. But the European country. Um, I hate doing this all the time. <laughs> I like think and think and think, and then I like go to say what was I was thinking like three thoughts ago. <laughs> well, you were saying about you were saying about Finland, Switzerland, yeah, uh, and, and the education system, and not only I think that they they teach differently too. Like they not only is their system better, but I think the way they teach their students and the way they deal with the certain problems at hand. Yeah. And I think there's a lot more uh, group work involved, more mm-hmm. associating with other, I don't know about now, with COVID, who knows, but right. uh, it wasn't so individual A plus test sheet. And I, it's going to change. It's going to slowly change. People do knock the school system, but it's, it's definitely hard uh it's probably a hard process to change like we don't know all the behind the scenes work like that's a that's a big that's been here i don't know how long the school schooling's been around right technically all our lives we were always learning but yeah that's right (laughs) that system and that's a people i a lot of people are like oh we need to change the school system we need to change it uh and i don't know if you've heard any of about any of that but it's definitely a big process to change. Well, and, and I think we have to, you know, we have to take it out of the bureaucrats, you know, the ones that are making the decisions and, and put it in the hands of the teachers. Like mm-hmm. these are the people that are, that are educated in education. Yep. They've spent all the time with children. They've, they've learned how people learn. Yep. You know, let's give them a good say. Like what's going to work better? Is a, is a shorter, a shorter class time um, with less homework? You know, does, does that work? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe doing your homework while you're in class you know and and i'm i'm talking as an ignorant because i I really yeah I'm oh i know teacher. nothing either i right, know nothing so I, either I'm just I'm, I'm just throwing it out there um i'll have a teacher on and they can explain <laughs> more <laughs> i got a couple things for you perfect and, and, uh, <laughs> so you know i think that's um you know we we got to go back to the people that are that are in it that do it every day and, mm-hmm. and gather some information like what would work what wouldn't what doesn't work yeah um you know, like in, in Finland, for example, I think they have a lot of their school days, especially for elementary children, is based on play. Yeah. And and their learning comes from how to build relationships, how to work out problems with each other um, on the playground. Yep. And then they go back in and they do, you know, a certain amount of work and then they take a break. Mm-hmm. They do a certain amount of work and then they take a break. Um, and then they most of them don't have homework. So yep. They go home. And yeah, I did hear about that. Homework's not really a thing. It's, it's just not much. And even in high school levels. You know, 15, 20 minutes of homework, just enough to, to get something done. And that and saves the up. headache too, right? Like yeah. here we're getting five classes and then five different subjects. And maybe four of those classes we have homework to get done for the next day. That right. can put a little bit of stress on you. Yeah. And I mean, some people just don't care. People are like, oh, whatever. Yeah. But the people that really are trying to push themselves and do better, it, it can be stressful. Oh, and, yeah. and, I, and I know they're preparing you. you know, they're trying to prepare you for the – for the world after high school because you know university you're a little more on your own but mm-hmm. you still have tons of assignments that you need to complete yep. outside of the the normal hours classroom yep. hours right so you've got to be regimented and disciplined and and get to the library and find a place where you like to yeah study <laughs> grab a coffee and go yeah um but I, I i think there could be some changes there just from what i've seen going through myself and then having my children go yep. through um, it is Especially being at that high uh, on top of the pyramid and coming all the way down to teachers and really seeing where the change needs to be yeah. is important. And I read a book. It's called Good Company. Okay. And it's uh, – I forget I forget the the guy's name, but he he owns all the Home Depots. Okay. Uh, he's, a yeah. billi- he's a billionaire, but he owns all the Home Depots and also owns the Atlanta Falcons uh, football team. Yeah. But he talked about how – um, he said everybody that was working had to work on the floor for at least two weeks. I don't know if that still is for Home Depot, but mm-hmm. he said it used to be when they were starting out for a long time. Everybody had to work on the floor for two weeks because yeah. technically that's the lowest position. But it's not really because but they're dealing with all the people. They're getting all the questions. They got to know everything. They know what to that what works, what doesn't. And people that are, I don't know, upstairs or technically more important in the warehouse's eyes i guess okay have a better perspective on what to expect down there like does that make sense so yeah, like absolutely 
dealing with lumber and dealing with appliances and dealing with people and knowing what to expect. And that's an important, I always thought that was a really important uh, system for their business. Cause it, well, and that's, that, that, that is their business, right? I mean, yeah. You know, these, these people that are on the floor are looking after their business. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are making first contact with the clients. Yep. Right. So if they're not happy and if, if things aren't working well, then they really want to know from them, like, what, how can we make this better? How can yeah. we make this work? Because if it doesn't work with them in the first, the first line of defense, defense contact, yeah, it's not going to work anywhere else. Anywhere else. Yeah. They won't have a job. So and they also did meetings where um, everybody was involved. Everybody had a say. Managers to cashiers to accountants and mm -hmm. CEOs. Like everybody was in a meeting together because it gave everybody a chance to be heard. Right. Which I think was super important. And that's hard to do nowadays, especially when everything's so hectic and so busy and it's hard to make time for everybody to be included and Yeah. But yeah. Same way for school. It's just how go down to the teachers, go down to the students, see what's working, what's not. Yeah. It's a tough but it's a tough change, right? That's a drill down, yeah, and, and try to figure it out. And it's it's no easy task. No, years and years of planning, probably. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it's a, you know, and I know, and I'm sure that they they evaluate their systems regularly, mm -hmm. you know, to try and find the best. I mean, you know, we do have a good education program in Canada, yep. you know, and and um, you know, comparably so to many many other countries. Like we are, yeah, we're no, still, we're very we're fortunate. Still very fortunate to be where we are. You gotta have that perspective too. I guess you could look at your own individual experience and be like, "Eh, I didn't like it," but overall, the masses, it's it, we do have a good system and a lot of support for our schooling, and yeah. it's working well for now. But <laughs> right, but it's good to question. Yeah. Oh and yeah. And it's good to say, you know, I think it'd be prudent of of people to say, "Hey, look, what." What are the best systems in the world? What are what are people claiming to be the best, and why? Mm -hmm. And and analyze our own systems and say how can we integrate some of these things into our into our programs, and how could it make us better? Yeah, that's that's all I'm thinking. Is really just I know it's a process. But yeah, what do we know though? We don't. We, yeah, <laughs> what, what, do we do, what do we know? That's right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What do we know? We don't know much about the schooling system. I or I don't. I'm not saying that you don't. I guess, but no, and I don't. Yeah, but it's just just my own experience and experience of my children. And Where did you go to university? I went, I went to I, played, I went to a couple of universities actually. I started at Saint of X. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to be a phys ed teacher. Cool. And um, and did uh, some sciences there, but then I only went one year there. Then I went to the University of Saint Anne. It's a little French school on just about half an hour south of Digby. Cool. Uh, I learned French. I took French immersion there for two years. And then did you take the ferry? I did take very <laughs> on occasion, but I played played volleyball there with uh, with the university team. Nice. And um, what position did you play? I was a setter. Oh, yeah. Family of setters. Family of setters. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it got to make sense. That the, yeah. You no. know, my kid. I taught my kids how to set too. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So th though we had a great time there, and we traveled around and went to a few national championships, and and uh, met a lot of great people, a lot of good friends, um, and so. It, and then I took a year off after that, and then I went ended up at St. Thomas University, and cool. did three years up there. So did you finish up there? Finished up there with my social work degree. Nice. Yeah, two years social work degree. Cool. And then how long were you a social worker? I was a social worker for almost twenty years. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Did great. lots of different jobs. In yeah, there. I was gonna say you probably jumped all over the place. I'm guessing in yeah. twenty years. I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> but I did, I did uh, addiction services. I did mental health. I did child protection. Adult protection. So uh, many stories. Yeah. There's so a, many. Yeah, there's a lot of different stories. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, you know, and it was, it was well around. I like to move around. I like the, I like the change. Mm -hmm. I like the learning. Um, if I was in a place for any more than a few years, I just, I got bored. Yeah. It, that's so, mm -hmm. especially nowadays. Yeah. It's so hard. Mm -hmm. Which again, the phones are stimulating. So right. I feel, and like you said, it, it does get a little mundane when you kind of know what to expect in the same place. But that's also hard because you want committed workers. And mm -hmm. But if you make it a good enough s place to work, then people will really enjoy it. Right. But yeah, I and think you deserve to bounce around. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Too good of a guy to not be a <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, and I enjoyed the jobs that I did. and and But I knew that there was a time. I knew when it was time mm -hmm. for me to try something else. And, and it, that's one good thing about working with the government is they usually offer – many different things they don't mind 
hey, if you want to go over there and try something, hey, that's great. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you'll be well suited there, and and they afforded me that that luxury. So you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. Um, you know, worked with extramural program, and and that was great. I get to get into the community and work with some great nurses and occupational therapists, physiotherapists. Cool. You know, so you, you learn a whole bunch of different things. What would you be do- dealing with, like in that medical field of uh, things? Uh, a lot of it was. It would be like sometimes it'd be grief counseling. Um, you know, if people can't do what they want, I, I'd be helping them find uh, get Medicare set up or uh, get medications mm-hmm. you know, covered, those kind of things. Um, people don't realize that not everybody is covered, and you have to do yeah. some work to get it. Like the, we do have a great Medicare system, but some people fall through the cracks. Yep, and they need a, they need some help just getting back on track and and uh, getting coverage you just a helping hand <laughs> yeah just a helping hand yeah. and then i you know i would just do some counseling i would check in with people and people would have major setbacks with surgeries and and come home and all of a sudden they feel lose a limb or so they're they're just dealing with a new way of life yeah uh, so i would go out and guide them and help them out and oh, that's awesome yeah so it was pretty cool so is it a rewarding job yeah it really can be it can be might be hard too sometimes though, eh? It's it can be stressful too. There's some situations out there that are yeah can take a toll on you. Well, and, and, and a lot of the times they ask you to go in to stressful situations like there maybe there is some some disagreements between family members and you're mm-hmm. trying to sort those things out and um, you know more so uh, you know with the child protection, adult protection kind of areas, very personal. You know yeah. when you're dealing with people's children and, and their well being. It's a lot of weight to handle. It's a lot of weight. A to lot handle. of weight. And there's so many good social workers out there that do amazing work that people have no idea. Oh yeah. What they do, and and if uh, you know, I'd always invited like, hey, look, if, if you want to challenge what these people are getting paid or whatever, s- go around with them for two weeks and see what they do. Yeah. I I think you'll change your mind pretty quickly. Give you a lot of perspective. <laughs> Give you a lot of perspective. <laughs> you know they they. They go into some situations that are that are dangerous sometimes. Yeah, you know, and and hostile. Oh, it's got. It, it would have to take a toll on you, and I guess the minds that would come in with time, with time of dealing that, and you would learn how to cope with certain situations. But right. to the average person, and every single person has a different life, That's and right. then so you, then you got to think how many people are in that social working aspect of things and then you so many different stories and so many situations things that you wouldn't even be able to handle in your own life right that people are going through absolutely but yeah yeah, yeah. you see you see a lot of the the harder parts of of the communities and you know you're you're in those trenches and trying to help people and sometimes people don't want to be helped but you know you, you have to do what you have to do yeah I mean, exactly you, you got to protect the children you got to protect the families and you know yep. women and and um you know, it's it was rewarding, and and uh, it's funny how your life takes a turn. And I had an opportunity for real estate, and yeah, and did it part time for four and a half years. Nice, and then went full time about two and a half years ago. Cool. In the real estate, so I think everybody should do at least like multiple different things in their lives. Yeah, I, like you got to get different perspective on everything. It's <laughs> it's kind of funny because right out of high school, and I'm not knocking education. I just I know that right now I can go whenever I want and I've been I've been kind of ready to go to school each year but I just don't I haven't gone yet Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) but uh I just love trying new things so right out of high school I just I jumped into a job and tried it and then like almost every around five to like uh, just six months almost every six months I would leave and go somewhere else because you do get that mundane feeling but I guess that's kind of a bad mindset because maybe I'm going to do that for everything. Maybe I'll do this for six months and then <laughs> give up. <laughs> no, but every six months it was almost like I jumped into something new because I wanted to learn something new and just see a different perspective of things. And it helped. And for the past two years, that's what I've been doing is just kind of jumping and meeting new people. Like I build relationships with each job I go into and yeah, it's really fun. Um, you see what you like and what you don't like. And I don't know. Yeah. I feel like more people need to do that, but that's just from my personal experience. Maybe maybe more people need to go to university. I don't know. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I think, I think it's cool, and, it, and everybody is individual and, and finds your things, but it sounds to me like you've kind of found a little bit of your niche in a sense, like this podcast could be an area for you to to learn very quickly about different things. Mm-hmm. You bring people in with different perspectives, and yep. 
you know, hey, you may start talking about occupations, but then you end up on a tangent and you learn about computers. You learn about. Yeah. I mean, you know, look where we, we were talking about Google and talking about life a little bit. And yeah, yeah, it, it goes all over the place. And I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, and really getting to know somebody is nice, especially. I think we are lacking true communication sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I don't know having a one. I know we do have microphones and it's not as personable and genuine as maybe we would make it if without this but yeah. it is nice to like have a conversation with someone yeah absolutely i don't know i just yeah and i think that's part of part of who you are and you know, mm -hmm. and, and and part of why I'm, I, I love to get into people's yeah. heads and not not into the, like i'm not analyzing no no them, yeah but understanding where they're from who their family is yeah wh what where they come from what do they like to do yeah build that connection and, and yeah Cause it's, it's I, well, I remember I remember running into the into you at at the store one time, and then you started asking me some questions of what I'm up to and what I've been doing, and it goes a long ways. Yeah, it goes a long ways, especially when you see a familiar face when you're I don't know wherever you are. Yeah, but I, I just find it's an important thing. I think it's a, it's human, it's it's real. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody has has that face, but. You know, to, to ask somebody how they're doing and really be genuine about it and take yeah. the time. And, you know, this day and age is so rushed. We, we want everything done yesterday. Yeah. I want this podcast to be done. I want 30 million episodes already. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, you'll get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, uh, which would be cool. Uh, but it's, it's taking that time out of your day to, to say hi to somebody for two minutes. And that could feel like an eternity, mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of people. And some, yeah, some people it is easier for and. Uh, a little harder for people but mm -hmm. uh it goes a long ways especially yeah. it makes people feel heard and that's important it's right. really important yeah that's right yeah, and and the people lack and there's a lot of people that don't know how to jump out of themselves and and are craving for someone to speak to them mm -hmm. and they just need that opportunity or like some people in the social workers aspect that they don't they don't want help <laughs> yeah but yeah and that that happens too for yeah sure. yeah well, I think we'll cut it there, eh? Yeah, sounds thank great. Thank you for having, or thank you for coming on. Yeah. I really appreciate it. You're oh, an pleasure. awesome guy. I just want everybody to know that Sean's one of the nicest guys I know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It really is true. Well, I've I've really enjoyed it, and I, and I was really honored to have you uh, invite me on, and um, I'd be happy to come back again and, yep. and see where it goes again. I'd love to talk about the social aspect of things, the social worker aspect. The, oh, there's so many stories. Yeah. So yeah. many things people deal with that we'll never know. Yeah, but no, uh, there's lots of lots of good. Yeah, things where can they uh, where can they find you at if they want to know more about Sean Campbell? Sean Campbell. Well, I mean, um, I've got a few boards on time, but if you want to call me, it's uh, you know you can call my my cell phone at five zero six four three four three nine zero four, and you can look me up on a on my website at um, uh, listerhome.ca. Hmm. And, uh, you do have an Instagram too, I think, right? Yep. I'm gonna follow you on Instagram on my podcasting. Yeah. Uh, no, great website. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've, I've got to get better at the Instagram thing. So. Yeah. Well, that just takes social time. Social media. Yeah. It just takes time. Just, just learn it. Start posting fake houses that you're selling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. when people. I'll build some Lego houses. Yeah. And put them up. Yeah. No, for uh, sure. No. Well, uh, thank you very much. No, no problem. And uh, hopefully, we'll we'll get to do this again sometime. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I'm gonna have you on again some point. Right. Some Perfect. point. <laughs> awesome. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.